All right, welcome back to Twin Flame Energy Podcast. How's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome to the podcast that almost didn't happen. <laughs> it's 5.27 p.m. on the day of posting. We're a couple of hours past when it's supposed to go up, but that's called human error that's life nature that is life <laughs> real arguments <laughs> and fights so today's topic that we touched on at the end of the last podcast once again is yep. fighting fair what the hell is it yeah yeah it's kind of ironic because that's what we've been doing all day just not fair the fighting portion <laughs> but anyways I have tons of research and all kinds of good stuff to look at I'm on the podcast today so where do you want to start off well I want to start by saying one thing about twin flames and Rubbish. what huh nothing <laughs> well yeah I want to know I want people to know that if you are with your significant other, your soulmate, or your twin flame, that it isn't going to just be a perfect, smooth sailing thing. There's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be things that you have to go through. And there's going to be things that will test your relationship and to take things to the next level or break it. You know how they say make or break? Well, that's kind of what that is. And I want to make sure that you know, people understand that, like, just because they might see something and be like, oh, my God, everything looks just so awesome. And it's like, well, they went through some stuff. They did some work. They put some, some time in it. And then they made it happen, you know, or those who don't, they just kind of, you know, fall from there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I agree. So I have two different things that we can dive into. I can dive straight into the top 12 tips given by relationship therapists and this I actually got from a self mm -hmm. um, online publication of an actual magazine but basically there are 12 tips that have been approved by therapists for fighting fair do you want to go through those first yeah okay. we'll go through them kind of slow and then we can kind of like delve into each one and see what our thoughts are yeah uh, first one is take a breath. I understand what that means. However, in the heat of an argument, how often are people actually taking that breath? Do you think you're capable of taking a breath? <laughs> I would say it's hard. It's a challenge. It is. Ex it's an extreme challenge. Just being honest, like to 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 take a breath when you're like trying to make a point, and that's really what arguments tend to be about it's like that person is trying to make this point the other person is trying to make a point the other person and it's like no but you need to see my point but no but no and then it just keeps going instead of both of you taking time to process and take a breath so I, I do understand it I just know that it's hard I think that I personally know how to take a breath and will say <laughs> beforehand that when we argue we're going to have like almost like a safe word like alright stop and I will say that word, like, stop, because I am a zero to 60 person. So I know when I'm at that halfway point of explosion and I don't want to say something that I will regret. So I'll say, okay, you know what? Let's stop right here. Let's table this. But then you come back and you're like, but no, this and this and this and this. And so then at that point, the floodgates open and I'm no longer liable for what comes out of my mouth because I've told you mm -mm. safe safety safety net yeah it's like the floodgates so why that. is it so hard why even if you have to like those... bite your own tongue you know that's 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 a that's a good question you know it's, 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 it's why is it hard why is it tough to stop take a breath and take a moment and you know, sometimes Sometimes it is the other way around. Sometimes I will be like, okay, let's just, you know, hold out 
for a moment and and it could be vice versa you know the, you know every once in a while mm-hmm. but i think that what what it what it re, what where it's at is the person understanding or i would say understanding the other person's like perspective and point of view mm-hmm. and because they don't they're only thinking about their perspective and their point of view mm-hmm. if you get what i'm saying mm-hmm. so like you know you're arguing about this you're arguing about that and you're like but i want to use this mic stand but i don't understand that that mic stand is a trigger for you mm-hmm. so then i'm like but it's just a mic stand and you're like no it's not just a mic stand it's not any mic stand and then it goes into something deeper and because the lack of you know, understanding, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That that mic stand has affected you. It affects everything. Mm-hmm. And it takes it for a big, big, big turn. Mm-hmm. You know, and vice versa. It could be about anything. You know what I mean? Like, it could be anything. You know, I'm just making something up, but that's just how it can be. And I think people really should start to take a breath and realize or even consider that the other person could be truly hurt or affected by something that to you may be so small right like it may be a tiny tiny thing but you know and that that consideration is everything that 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 can that can be everything one tip it has under here is, for instance, you can put one hand on your chest mm-hmm. and the other on your stomach, then mm-hmm. breathe in and out slowly through your nose. Mm-hmm. I think to even think about something like this in the heat of an argument, you have to have extreme control. self-control and be yeah. actively working yeah. on fighting fear. That has to be something that is literally like a practice, like right. a, a meditation style practice yeah. that you're working on in order for this to even come up in your mind. And I think that that will take a lot of work for Mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, relationships, because I would say you two, both of you have to be in sync Mm -hmm. to the point of this is what we do when Mm -hmm. we realize that we are getting to a level of no return. We both take a, you know, a quick meditation Mm -hmm. moment and we meditate together and breathe. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just say, we'll come back to this when we both have a better mind. Right. That is the best way, I guess, to handle it. Easier said than done, clearly, but I, you know, I agree with that. Okay. So let's get to the second tip of Mm -hmm. this list. Consider scheduling your conflict conversation. Mm. Now that Mm. act obviously piggybacks off of the first one when we're having arguments and it's like one of us is like, okay, stop. Cause I'm about to go to a whole nother level that right. I can't be responsible for. We need to be able to be like, okay, you know what? Let's talk about this later. Let's right. talk about this after this or that and the other. Right. And I think th- making a commitment to that is right. like number one priority because yeah. if you can't do that, then it's automatically no longer going to be a fair fight. Because one person has already conceded and the other person is continuing to punch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that as well. Almost like, you know, hey, we're going to talk about this not in five minutes, not in ten minutes. We're going to literally talk about it. After dinner. Later at night. Maybe it's probably always best. I recommend that it's best to talk about things like that when you know your kids are asleep and you know because that's negative energy going in your in your around your room your house and everything and you don't want that to piggyback into your child's like life subconsciously you don't want them to hear that you know what i mean yeah so i do i do recommend just you know putting things to a later time or a time where it's just two of you alone i agree so number three is stick to the issue. Yes. Now this is something 
that I think is bullshit. I'm just <laughs> no, because that I know that's that's that one right there. That one is is pretty tough for you. And no, it's not. <laughs> Let me give an example of this. This is okay? my, my perspective. No, of this it. is an Am example. I... This is an example. Okay. <laughs> if uh... the argument is about something small and minuscule. However, the only reason why you're arguing about it is because of a long-standing lack of one person making sure that the other person is heard. You are still sticking to the issue. However, the circumstances may be different. So the whole issue could be, I am not heard, but the specific thing that is happening in that moment could be about you know, a computer part or something in the kitchen, but it can all stem from this person not being heard. So at the end of the day, even though you might have 12 examples that are different, if they're all examples of a person saying, this is why I don't feel heard, mm. that is the definition of sticking to the issue from my perspective. Now, I will disagree on that one. Um, I agree to a certain extent, mm -hmm. meaning, I think that it's like it's almost like holding a debt over someone for too long. You but can it do... hasn't been paid, so therefore you're still in debt. But wait, it's a reminder though. You can remind them, maybe remind them of another issue. But I don't think you should remind them with twelve or fifteen different issues because to them that's being they're being boggled with so many different things that they have to put themselves in that position, put themselves in that, that mindset or in perspective and go back five, ten years or wherever, how long it was and think about it. And then, and then you've done it almost five, six times or five different, you know, it, it kind of can get confusing for the other side of it to understand your initial point. Yeah, I'll, and, and yeah. I'm saying that, that that's just in the perspective of the other person or the listener, you know. I will say for me because I'm someone who is addicted to clarity. Mm. When I bring up analogies or examples mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. other times, <laughs> they all serve the purpose of giving clarity because maybe the specific situation that is being argued about in that moment that is stemming from not being heard you don't understand mm -hmm. how that person could not feel heard in that situation. Mm -hmm. So then you pull from other experiences in order to provide more clarity, but it, you but, get even yeah, more confused. Because yes, yes. And, and, that, and that's only clarity for you because those other perspectives and other times and other things or scenarios were really clear for you. Mm -hmm. Even then it could have been another thing that wasn't clear for them. So I'm saying it's like, I think it's best to try to stick with maybe a small, you know, simple reminder and then come to what we're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I, that's what I, I think only in, only just to, it's like, not everyone will get your perspective, even if it was a perspective back then, you know. All right. Number four. Don't fight to win. Mm -hmm. mm. Like the last word kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> no, I do get it because it's yeah. like I understand not fighting to win. Like if uh -huh. you're like, I want this and you want that. It's not mm -hmm. really about that. It's about coming to a position where yeah. both sides are happy with whatever the situation is. I do think that we're going to come back to this not being heard thing. I think it's both parties responsibility to make sure the other person is heard and understood. And if a person is saying I'm not heard or I don't feel loved right. or I don't feel understood, that should come to the forefront. Uh -huh. And it's not a to win thing. It's just in order to elevate the relationship as a whole. So that right. both parties are like that. So if you know, if I'm fighting for your right to be heard and you're fighting for my right to be heard, mm -hmm. we'll both be heard. Right, right. And I think I think that is a good point. Like, if you're both in the midst of something and you're like, okay, do you feel, you know, that I acknowledged what 
the concern is or vice versa you know mm -hmm. so yeah Number five mm -hmm. is try to be receptive to each other's concerns. Do you think you do that? I feel like I try to, but maybe my version mm -hmm. of that may not look the same for you or whoever. I think it's weird for us because you don't come to the table with much stuff. You don't you don't ever start an argument or start mm -hmm. a conversation mm -hmm. like something's bothering you ever mm -hmm. I'm normally picking like is there something yeah, more chill, that you want to more... talk about yeah. or yeah. because I have no problem saying when something is bothering me or something needs to be addressed right. but you never really have anything to be addressed I feel like you should because I'm I'm a self evaluator so I'm like yeah, it's maybe it's very does this bother him I or this bother do. him? Yeah, I think it's very rare that I do. Like, but I'm I'm not I'm I'm pretty easy going though. I don't. It, it's not too much that just bothers me to my like core. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To where I'm like, oh my god, I don't. You know what I mean? Because I, you know, that's just not me. Mm -hmm. anymore. But um, I think. The but there there are times where I'm like. You know, I really feel or, you know, I really feel like, you know, like we should or I should or you should or mm -hmm. whatever the case is to do that. And even then, I don't come at it like hard as I probably should if, if that's what you're looking for. You know what I mean? Because, Not necessarily for me, I hard. Just, you know, Not I don't want to ask for too much. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just kind of like, I'm just chill. I'm just laid back. You know? what, the reason why I ask because I what turns our conversations into arguments mm -hmm. is if I come to the table with something, mm -hmm. you take that moment to bring up something. I'm, I'm when I think about conversations or arguments, mm -hmm. if someone brings me an issue mm -hmm. in that moment, it's my job to focus on the issue that's brought to me, not bring up my own issues. Okay. So I'm, like if I bring an issue to you, mm -hmm. that conversation should be about the issue that I'm having, how we can remediate it together. Right. Am I irrational? Am I not? Blah, 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 blah. Right. And just coming to a head with that. Right. What you'll do a lot of times is in that moment, push to the side my issue and bring up your own issue. And so that is in turn what takes me to a place of saying, I feel like I'm not heard because mm -hmm. if you brought me an issue, I would not use that moment to bring up my own issue. I would be like, he's brought an issue to the table. Let's address his issue now. And at another time, mm -hmm. I'll bring an issue to a table. I guess, yeah, I guess because, for example, and those who are also like me, where it comes to, like, I don't think about issues a lot. I don't think about issues, you know, on, on a daily basis or just in general. I don't, I'm not thinking about what's bothering me until it's like, Oh yeah, that one time I remember when blah 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 and then it's like I'm thinking about it because you know, like I said, I'm not as bothered, but for those who are like that, I would suggest that writing things down more often and and also um relying on your significant other to maybe help you acknowledge those things. Because if that is an issue and you don't, you're not as good to really communicate those kind of emotions out, I think it's it's good to really try to talk about it. That way that person can help keep track and, you know, follow through with certain things that may be bothering you. Mm -hmm. I will say the next couple are extremely important and need to be implemented immediately. So we can almost put them together. Number six and number seven. Number six is repeat what you are hearing. Mm -hmm. So, I think that should be implemented immediately. Like, like if I say something to you, yeah. you repeat back what you've heard me say, right. and vice versa. Right, right. So that, that's very true. That that's very that true. can automatically give clarity in the moment, and then the person can be like, "Okay, yeah. this person actually." Because you don't me. want to be like, "So you mean?" Yes. And then it's like, "No, that's not what I mean." Yes. Let's let's clarify. Mm -hmm. You know, but then not getting so upset if the person didn't fully get it that way. Right, but when you repeat it, 
if it's wrong, you can just then state what you said cl- again. Can clarify exactly. Which takes us to seven. Use I statements. I. Meaning, if I say I feel that mm-hmm. when you do this, it makes me feel this way, mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. you always blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Because that's one thing mm-hmm. you say, you say that I put words in your mouth, or mm-hmm. I tell you how you feel and i'm like no Mm -hmm. i'm telling you how i am experiencing you so Mm -hmm. this is how when you do this it makes me feel like this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i feel like sometimes you don't hear it that way you hear it like i'm telling you who you are and how you are and i'm saying no regardless of you could think you're being the sweetest person on the planet but if i experience you in a different manner Mm -hmm. it's my job to tell you that so that if we're going to be in a position where we're in a relationship, right. you can tweak it so that your intentions are being perceived as they should be perceived. Right. You know what I mean? Right. 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 Yeah. And that, that can, and I would say that probably can get tough, you know, mm-hmm. because it's hard to really determine that. Like it, 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 it sounds like you're saying, you know, and then it's mm-hmm. like, no this is just how you make me feel Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so with 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 reiterating the statement like six Mm -hmm. you know it will really help with the clarity on how that person how you make the person feel blah 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 Mm -hmm. so i think that that helps yeah number eight find common ground Mm -hmm. i don't know how you do that in an argument (laughs) (laughs) Like, What's the common ground? We both live in this house. I mean, <laughs> what what is I don't know. What's the what's what is it supposed to? Uh, like it says acknowledge when you agree with or at least understand where the other person is coming from. I think it's just being on the same page, right? Uh-huh. Like like compromise. Finding a compromise with this argument that we both can settle on and say, okay, we're good. Is that? Yes. It's it's saying make sure and address the fact that you understand what the person is saying. Mm -hmm. Then it's easier to find the compromise. Right. Okay. So I guess that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Number nine, leave snark (laughs) and name calling at the door. Oh, okay. And I shall do that. I don't know. (laughs) How does it going to be possible for you? No, it's po- I'll tell you exactly how it's possible for me. It's possible for me that when I reach the moment where I say, pause, let's table this, oh, it actually it's happens. It's only possible. But what if, we, come, what if we table it and we come back later and you're like, but blah, blah, blah. No, that, that won't happen because after, er, when you take me out of the moment, yeah. I can even see more clarity and I'm able to even see your side more. Yeah. I will say that, uh, that, that, tends to happen with us a lot more yes literally the next day we'll have yeah, a, the we'll same have a conversation, conversation and, and it sounds and flows completely sounds, yeah, differently yeah. and i think that we need to us not not just saying it for everyone else but for us we need to implement tabling things and coming to them with a better mind and head you know more often mm-hmm. you know what i mean like if for whatever reason, you know, we had a long night, didn't sleep, but when we get into an argument, we need to probably take a moment, get a good nap in, <laughs> and then come back with some clarity. Yes. So, got three more in this list, and then we've got one more thing to hit here. So, number 10 is take a break, mm-hmm. but don't just leave. Okay. Which we, that kind of leads goes with number one you know of tabling it for later yeah yeah Yeah. number 11 set fair fight boundaries i mean like no name calling and blah 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 Uh, i guess i mean it's yeah i mean that should be already established in the initial conversation yeah i think if 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 there's a mutual respect as to limits in terms of stopping when another person is overwhelmed and things like that, you won't get to that point. Right, right. And number 12 is consider an aftercare ritual. Mm-hmm. It says hugging in silence. Okay. So, like, 
We're done arguing. And you hug now in you silence. Hug each other. How cute. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> that was just so like square. <laughs> we're, we're clearly a different kind of couple. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> okay. Real quick. I no, we do. <laughs> we do like to hug. That's not what we're saying. Every yeah. three or four years. Yeah. Um, well, so... <laughs> So I do have an, one more article I do want to hit uh, before we take a break. Um, Upjourney.com had an article, how often do couples argue or fight in a healthy relationship according to relationship experts? So there are a bunch of therapists and things like that that had a lot to say. One of the things I saw in here was if couples fight but avoid the following four behaviors, they might be okay. So here are the four behaviors they say to First one is a stonewalling, which is tuning out your partner, shutting down a conversation or argument, which I know I do. Mm-hmm. I do that because once again, oh, step Lord. one, <laughs> when we were supposed to pause and table the conversation that didn't happen. So my way of not resorting to name calling is to stonewall for my own safety and for your safety. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Defensiveness. Mm-hmm. Not taking responsibility for your role in the disagreement. Oh my god. I'll let you handle this one. Wait, what? You want me to read? Uh, no, no, read it. Read defensiveness. It. Yeah. Not taking responsibility for your role in the disagreement. Oh, okay. What's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I look, look listen. I mean that, that that that's good. That's a good one, really. That is a good one. Mm-hmm. You know, taking responsibility and but honestly that goes back to some of the other points too as to truly understanding the other person's how they feel, blah blah blah. Because what's being said. Because it's like if you don't really understand what the argument's about, you don't know how you make that person feel, you don't know how you're hurting them. It kinda goes and goes and goes and goes. But when you truly do all those steps you will acknowledge these things that you're saying right now. Mm-hmm. So I, agree. I, you know, number three, criticizing, attacking who mm-hmm. your partner is instead of focusing on a single concern. Yes. Yes. And yes. I know that's hard. Yes. And that all goes back to when, 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 uh, when the temperature is flaring, mm-hmm. all of these things are going to happen. You mm-hmm. have to keep the temperature back yeah. in order to not hit this. And the last one is showing contempt, assuming an air of superiority or a lack of respect for your partner. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Now, here's another thought. Couples who are in attachment stress often fight almost consistently. Okay. Do you know what attachment stress is? What is their okay. interpretation of that? Attachment stress uh, is when a couple's emotional bond is strained. So one or more, one or both feel that they cannot reach each other for reassurance, mm-hmm. acceptance, or care. Mm-hmm. Under these conditions, you can come to feel constantly frustrated, irritated, mm-hmm. and every action of our partner can stir us into an angry protest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So I do think that we we uh, we deal with that because it's like, you start to feel like you're not feeling hurt. You start to feel like if this person loves me, they would listen to me. They'd care how they yeah. make me feel. And so it does, that's, that definitely happens. Right. Right. It says here in a healthy relationship, the key is not how much you fight, but how well you fight. Now here's a thought. Yeah. The key is identifying that cycle and adjusting it so that you both feel hurt, which leads to a deeper connection and feeling bonded. Hmm. So the question is, how do you do, how do you, in your opinion, how can you work to make sure the other person feels hurt? Um, I would say a lot of times removing your own perspective, Mm -hmm. removing my perspective will really help with that because once again, my perspective maybe so far off somebody else's perspective you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's like how this person was raised is so different from that person being raised that they feel like you know 
getting slapped is love. And the other person don't feel that way. You right, know what I mean? Right. But it's just, you know, and I'm not I'm you know, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's that's a that's an example of you know, taking your perspective out. Like, I feel like this is the smallest thing ever in life. But I need to remove that and try to acknowledge, okay, where is this really coming from? Mm-hmm. All right. What of course did, did you? Um, I, I agree with you. Um, I think that often what unfortunately happens is when you're in an argument or you're talking about something, the other person's talking, it's very hard to not be in your head because something may come to like something that you want to say may come Mm -hmm. to fruition in your brain as the other person's talking and you don't want to forget it because you feel like it's important. But I guess if you let go of it, if it's truly important, it it will remain Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. versus holding on to it and being at the forefront of your brain over what the other person is saying, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think just genuinely having desire to want to hear what your partner has to say Right. with the intent of fixing whatever the problem is so that it doesn't become a looping cycle and you're not fighting about literally the same thing over and over and over and over again. Right, right. Okay. Well, this may be a great time for a break. Um, we do have another musical selection for you guys to enjoy, and we will be right back in a moment. night sometimes at night i fly to a place as we hide tonight i won't say goodbye i want you by my side let's try something brand new just take my hand i'll lead you Yes, it's true, we just flew. See that star shoot past you. You're the only one that I can do. All the crazy things that I want to. I don't have to worry about you. Cause I am you. Send my pain. Send my pain. It resonates. It resonates. Nobody, nobody can separate us. Send our connection.
are back. That was one of the vapors. The song is entitled Connection, parentheses, Another World, off of the Winter Tears album. Definitely go check that out everywhere where music can be streamed. So we have reached the point in the podcast today where we're going to be talking about that book of the month. Once again, that book that we have chosen for the first month of the podcast is You Are the Placebo, Placebo. Making Your Mind Matter by Dr. Joe Dispenza. That book was actually released April 29th, 2014. And getting through the first three chapters this uh, past week was pretty cool. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. One thing in particular I did want to bring up um, that pretty much the beginning of the book really touched on was just a lot of stories of people who were put in placebo positions. Yeah. So obviously a placebo is something that you think you're doing that really isn't actually having an effect on yeah. whatever uh, position that you're in. For an example, there was a gentleman in the book, he was diagnosed with cancer and after basically being on a deathbed and then recovering his doctor asked him what could he do for him and he said help me live till Christmas for my wife and her family and after that um, he continued to actually get better mm -hmm. um, he was seeing the doctor regularly I think once a month or something like that and then all of a sudden all of a sudden randomly Christmas came and then his health deteriorated and he yeah. died yeah. Um, when they did the autopsy after that, they found little to no ev evidence of the cancer. Um, not It was not enough cancer in his body to even have killed him. It mm -hmm. actually, uh, the the cancer that he was originally diagnosed with, it was a metastatic esophageal cancer. That wasn't even showing up in the autopsy. It ended up being a false positive. Wow. So the question that was posed was, was he killed by thought alone? Yeah. Because everyone around him, his wife, his, his parents, yeah, well, he was older. So his wife, his doctors, you know, any family he was around all knew, okay, he's dying. And he thought he's dying. But yeah. in the end, there was nothing in the autopsy that shows that any of these things actually killed him. What are your thoughts right. on that? It's in the mind. It's literally in the mind, you know? The mind is definitely a it's, powerful it's component. Powerful. You know, that's why it's like if someone in your family is going through something or even in the hospital or whatever the case may be, um, it's just good to have positive energy around them, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of surrounding them with that. And what sucks is a lot of times families get to get in, in you know, a, a harder, you know, way they're getting they're getting frustrated they're getting angry and there's a lot of negative energy going around when someone is either passing or has passed and then that just brings so many different negative things and you know subconsciously you're failing your system you're failing your body and that person will be failing themselves because they don't have any hope around them you know right I fully, so I, fully I just agree. feel like the mind is, is extremely powerful. I definitely, you know, I'm not one of those people that will ever, you know, we're not going to sit here and say everybody who dies, it was just in their mind. That's not the case at all. There are real illnesses out there. Mm -hmm. There are real things that happen to people. And, but I think this book definitely gives you a perspective that there are some things that were, are in our own control. And some of the, obviously, some of the examples in the book are, like, extreme examples, like metastatic cancer is a huge thing, mm -hmm. but how often, you know, are we walking through life with headaches or not sleeping? And a lot of that stuff yeah. ends up being psychological, yeah. and when we finally decide that we want to tackle those things and change our habits and change, you know, the rewiring our brains, yeah. how many of those things can in some you know way shape form or fashion right right I, I even honestly I feel that too you can heal physical actual things you can heal things with your mind alone I truly truly believe that yeah you know what I mean like if you had some kind of skin issue and you just took it in your mind took account to you know meditate those things away 
You know what I mean? And eventually, it will go away. You yeah. will and be able to heal yourself. I do. I do believe that. Yeah, I think those things take time. They yeah. take dedication. Definitely. It definitely, definitely takes dedication. some extreme practice. It's not something you know. You just. <laughs> right, but I think right. if you if that, you commit to yeah, it, yeah, definitely, definitely possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we have reached the bucket, the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we explained last time, this will be happening at the end of each one of our podcasts. This is how we will find out what next week top next week's topic is going to be and pose a question for you to think about over the next week as we get ready so drum roll please you want to pick oh wait you pick less i think i picked yeah I picked okay less. i'll pick this time so podcast week is supporting roles who do you need me to be for you Mm. That's an interesting topic. That is. That is an interesting topic. And we obviously are not going to expound on it today because that is what next week's podcast is going to be completely about. So, alrighty. This is officially the end of episode two of the Twin Flame Energy Podcast. We hope you had as much fun as we did. And yeah. definitely don't forget to like, comment, share subscribe all that good stuff and of course ignite, ignite your, your energy, energy.